Welcome to the Bougie Black Brother Network. Welcome to Urban Lifestyle Cafe. I'm Michael, your bougie black brother, and I'm here with my co-host Alicia. Hello. And today we are in the middle of our run for the Oscars because Golden Globes are over, and we're looking for Oscar nominees. So this day we're looking at a highly rated movie. Very highly rated on, I think, for uh, IMDb, all the critics, uh, really highly rated called Lady Bird. Lady Bird. Did you see the ratings on that, Leash? Yeah, I seen the ratings on it. Yeah, it was pretty high. I I think it was sitting at 100 on Rotten Tomatoes for the longest. And then I think it dropped to 99 because somebody finally said, eh, it's okay <laughs> and it dropped down one point but we got a chance to check it out and you know most of the time uh i try to get a summary of it didn't i didn't really want to look at any of the previews because it wasn't on my radar was it on yours no it wasn't and, you know so this movie wasn't one of them ones like ooh, uh, i, I Let's can't wait to see that one. This one really wasn't. So let me give you a quick synopsis. Marion McPherson, a California nurse, works tirelessly to keep her family afloat after her husband loses his job. She also maintains a turbulent bond with a teenage daughter who is just like her, loving, strong-willed, and deeply opinionated. That was it. That's all. No more than that. Simple indie type movie. So we checked it out. <laughs> and when we checked it out, Alicia, what was your impressions? I was I don't know why people liked it so much. Um I basically thought it was one of them another you know, we go back in the days, it's the like um what is it? The like Breakfast Club. Yes, exactly. Pretty and Pink. Yes, yes. It's more so a teenage. The huge movies. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And it was a, it was something that, you know. I didn't see anything that was exciting about it. Just her telling her story, a, a brat, a teenage brat, which is nothing new. We, you know, we all see that every day with teenagers. And so all she all they did was tell a story of a teenage brat wanting to get her way or this one, to, you know, which a girls are. And so that was it. I didn't see nothing else different about it. Yeah, so coming of age story let's just put it into that scenario coming of age they had some good ones that was out um even napoleon dynamite was something in that reign which i highly enjoyed uh juno uh, yes juno that one yeah we love juno love juno yeah we love written so well it was acted very well um so again it goes back to these you know his name is john hughes you know he did a lot of those um I think it was 80s movies so a lot of his 80s movies was about young girls young boys blah 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 but this one was ladybird and it really centered on even though that synopsis kind of told you about the mother it was really about the young girl it, re- it, it really in, was it, yeah. it, it had really it was all about the little girl all about the, excuse me the not teenager. the little girl the teenager mm-hmm. um She's a very good actress. Yes. She did a very good part. I mean, her the role she did, the acting was very good. I love her friend, her little partner, who mm-hmm. she treated, you know, and she was nice to her. And then, like, you know, normal story is she treated her bad, cut her loose to hang out with the rich girls, and then realized the rich people, she listened to us, what was it, heard a song on the radio mm-hmm. that made her gave her um, what reminisce back to her and her girlfriend she said i'm not going to problem with you while she's in the car right right what the fuck so it's interesting her her friend is named uh real name benny felstein you know she was really good guess who's her brother who's her brother if you look at her remember her brother is jonah hill really yep okay jonah hill 
And she was adorable in here. I thought she was like uh really she played a really good role, you know, the kind of ostracized young girl who was, you know, slightly overweight but had personality and everything. So she was really she was really good. I really she liked was. her. I she really was. She was adorable. Her. Yes, she was. I and like I said, I I really liked her. I really did like her. I love the way they presented her. Yes, they did. You know what I mean? Yes. They didn't show her weakness. You know what I mean? Right. She was still pretty confident, but you know, later on in the movie, as her best friends start moving away from her, then you start seeing her insecurities and everything like that. But uh, yeah, the main character, her name is, I don't even know how to say this, but it's Cerise Ronan. Yeah, that's it, Cerise. That's the um, way you say it. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but that's her name. And she was a good actress. She did really, really well in there. And her mother was played by Laura Metcalf. So all throughout here, they had good supporting characters. One of her best friends that she was, she really liked. Um, he was happen to be gay. His name, oh, you know, yeah. his real name is Lucas Hedges. That was but so that adorable. Was, it was cool because he was a really nice kid. Yes, and wasn't they it? all liked him. You know what I mean? Oh my God! Yes, he would. I, you know, I really liked him too. Then yeah. those are the two people in the whole movie. And besides them, besides the father, I love yeah. the father. Mm-hmm. And um, those that are the three people. Tracy Letts. Yeah, those are the Tracy. three characters I like the most. I yeah. love the whole thing. I mean, and the mom was good. She came yeah. and went, but yeah. uh, I think she, I think she was over the top I think a little she was bit. Too. Um, but they played together against each other. Her, the mother, and the daughter. So really, that relationship between the two and don't played forget together. They adopted two other kids. Yeah, so that was fucking cool. I, was, as hell I too. thought that was cool too, and I think that I mean, but again, the story is based on. Her daughter, the teenager, who was selfish, self-centered, egotistical, and so that's how she was. So the thing that you, it was written by and directed by a woman named Greta Gerwin. Um, kind of almost biographical. Um, cause she grew up in Sacramento, and she really wanted to show that. Uh, Cerise actually looks like her, too. So if you see Greta, you'll say, wow. She really picked the right person to play this role. So, and and if you know what's going on now, it's a big thing about giving women opportunities. Right. To right. direct yeah. and That's write. Right. And so this was a good opportunity for this woman to express this. Not saying it's a bad movie, but I'm really looking at the ratings like, are you fucking kidding me? I know. It's like it's rated as the, the critic, best movie ever. Yeah, the critics gave it 99. Yeah. Let's say that. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Now, the viewers gave it 80, I think 82, 85. Yeah. It's still kind of it's still, still kind of high, high, but Yeah, still kind of um high. I mean, do everybody really want to see a teenager go through shit and but make But some a people movie? do. So, the good thing was, and I thought it would be interesting. So, you know, the small little synopsis that I gave, it, you know, it depends on which one you read. It also says that she's wanting to move to the other coast. Like she wanted to go to school because she was in her high school. Years. Yeah, she, did, yeah, she didn't want to stay in what, Sacramento? She didn't want to stay in Sacramento. She didn't want to stay close to anything where she at right now. She right. wanted to get away. And it was pretty much. Um, she needed a change because she was so familiar with everything, but she wanted a change. And I just thought that was pretty interesting when I when I kind of started reading and I was like, oh, so cool. It'll show her starting here and then it'll show how she, you know, when she moves to the East Coast and how she adapted to that. The problem is the last maybe 10 minutes of the movie was her in New York. Right. And Get, said... Wait, wait, wait. Uh, what happened? What happened in New York? Tell me what happened. I mean, no, I'm just saying. I mean, it, it like what you said, seeing her transition, she she acted like what a normal teenager would do. Yeah. Your and, first time away from home, uh, you want to go hang out, you out in the city, you're drinking, you're smoking, you kind of get in trouble with things, rush to the hospital... All types of crazy stuff. Then you call your parents and say, I'm sorry. I see it. I matured. I I see where I went wrong. And 
Everything that I love is still there. I'm sorry. In one day. I know. I'm like, what and I'm hell? like, <laughs> I get it. So what I got was the writer wanted to hurry up and end the story. And the story was really based on how her relationship with the city of Sacramento and how the parents really wanted her to be who she was. And Sacramento allowed her, that environment allowed her to be who she was. That was cool. Just don't think it was transitioned to the East Coast thing. I think if they sent her there and she just looked and say, I got a new beginning, I think it would have been fine. Mm -hmm. I think that would have been fine. But to close it out with such a short um, look and short experiences like that, I, I don't think it was fair to the character at the end. But... Overall, you know, you, you go through the process, her in high school. Um, like Leisha said, she had a adopted brother and sister who was goths. So they had all the black on. And I thought and it tattoos. was cool because she, she was so, she was mean to them in some ways too. She was just really kind of. Rude. Yeah, kind of rude and forceful and demanding. And they were trying to help everything. her. Yeah, but she was kind of like, whatever. Mm -hmm. and, and moved on. But. She played a strong mother who's who pushed them um, to be better and to she, want better. And she was the only one. And she was kind of like, you're not going to amount to that in any way. So, and, and she was always kind of negative and then turn around and be positive. Then she was negative and then she turned around and be positive. And, and it was weird. And she went to a Catholic school, right? Yes, yeah, she did. So... That environment was kind of different for the main character, too. Because Lady Bird is what she called herself. Yes. That wasn't her, her name. The nickname that anybody else gave her with That's what she said. She I her, called yeah, me my, yep, yep, Lady yep. Bird. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was interesting. So, again, just like a coming-of-age story, it's not too much you can talk about it, which is sad good bad or indifferent i mean it's just I, I mean anything that normally you're in your life as an adult with your teenager that you go through trying to get them ready for college get them to understand you know life and get your test together right, get, stay yep, in school and try you know stop getting in trouble submit it in colleges yep um and you're like, hanging with the wrong people you yeah know. i mean anything typically that you know you go through with teenagers this is exactly all it is and and everything you've seen in the movie is what you've seen before so it was nothing really that unique you know what i mean she was on the other side of the tracks as they said um on the poor side and then the other side was the richer kids and she was in school with the, the really richer kids. i mean like and then she turned around and tried to fake like she was part of them mm -hmm. so she said that was my house and she she finally had a relationship with one of the rich girls that was there. I think her name is Odea Rush. Um, but but she found out that she wasn't rich. Yeah. And so she caught her with that, but she still hung with her. I know. That's and, like. But it, normally they don't. I know. So that's what I said. Normally they cut them off and like, you're phony, you're a liar, uh, and I don't hang with kids like you. But they still stayed together. Again. Now, again, I'm based on Greta, her writing could be true. You know what I mean? But when you see in a movie and you see in the same type of concepts, it don't seem believable. You know what I mean? But if you wanted to write it that way or if that truly happened, I, I'm okay with that. That character, I really didn't think too much of. The, the boy that she was dating, um, the cool boy with the dark um, hair yeah, and everything, yeah. and he wasn't too much of a character either. You know what I mean? There was a lot of other supporting characters that was just okay. You know, uh, I think they supposed to be impactful characters, but they really weren't. Like I, I said, the I people, the, the ones, the ones that were really that you, you fell in love with and, and, uh, couldn't associate with. Yeah, it was the dad, mm -hmm. the, the gay boy, the mm -hmm. gay guy, and her best friend. And maybe even the sisters, the siblings, you know what I'm saying? Well, the siblings were, different yeah so you were attracted to them in a way because they were they were totally different than the family right and, and you're like what right. the hell are they doing there exactly so overall you can't like you like michael said we really can't there's nothing much we could talk about this movie yeah anyway. it was you know it was a typical non-action just uh, you know 
regular movie. But and I so, mean, it's not regular, but a teenage movie. Let's teenage say a teenage movie. movie. So there's other drama or dramedies or anything like that that I just thought were better, but I don't think this was it. You know, let me, let me give you some examples of these uh, blushing type of reviews, the kind of modest, miraculous, low budget gem that takes on a life of its own. You know, that's variety. Washington Post. Anyone who's lived within an emotional cyclone known as adolescence will recognize the vidigerous highs and lows of Lady Bird. I think they paid them to say Yeah, okay. That. I mean, okay. I get it. You want to give thanks for how wonderful it is, how wise and funny and full of grace. That's the Wall Street Journal. I don't think so. I don't I think this is some really overrated over pompous type of wow this is so amazing let's say this they made enough money to pay them damn people to take good things about the movie and so here's another <laughs> problem here's another <laughs> problem with critics critics like what they like so they may see some things that they like that doesn't mean it's the best and critics are critics so critics is going to see what they want to see and tell you how good it is that's why half of the time I don't really I, I kind of look at the critics, but I like to see things on my own. And if the story is interesting, it draws me to it. And even if the critics say it's good, or if they say it's okay, if I like what the concept is, then you know, Alicia and I was going to see it. And there's a couple of them that we just had to see, you know. And um, we did a lot of reviews on the ones that drew us to it. This was something that it was just highly rated and it won a lot of awards. So, you know, you'll get to the Golden Globes already and it won for... Best Motion Picture. Best Motion Picture? Yes. Really? Well, it says here, go winner, winner, uh -huh. nominee, yeah, winner, um, and Best Performance by Actress. Yeah, so the... Um, best Motion Picture and Best Performance by Actress. Yeah, I thought Ron for screenplay. So no, no, no. What you call it, Ron for screenplay? Yeah, I'm looking at it now. Yeah, and um. So they won two awards. Then. Yes, they did. So okay, I mean, I don't know about best picture. I mean, this year for Golden Globe. I mean, this year for let's say this year for um, movie nomination compared to last year, it's kind of weak. It's well, I think you can take some out and hold about maybe four really strong players. Where last year, it was so many that you didn't know. You can throw it up and go, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and I think almost all of them. The only one that I was kind of cautious on was last year was La La Land. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a good movie. So, if it won, I would have been like, yeah, okay. It won. I'm, I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. But Lady Bird, if it wins, I'm still saying there's too many other better movies that's out. Well, we'll see what happened with the, um, what is it, Emmys or Academy Awards? No, Academy Awards. We'll see what happened to Academy Awards because there'll be a different, there may be a different selection because last no, year. No, no, it'll be the same selection. It's just who Who's who going to win. Pick, yeah, who's going to win. Mm -hmm. So what do you give? I give, okay, let's say I'm going to start this one. Okay. So I am going to give them this movie. A six and a half. <laughs> okay. So I'll be quick with mine. I'll give it a six. Okay. Because I'm not going to see I ha I kind of had to see it, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to see it. But the reason why I gave it a six and a half because of the characters I like. So the reason why I gave it a six and not a five is because of the characters. <laughs> I don't think it was that good no, of a wasn't. movie. It wasn't. I don't think the... So let me it's pull almost back. like it's, it's almost like nobody ever seen a movie like this before. Yeah, it's like wow. This is like this the is first so new. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No. So the young girl really held up the movie because everything centered around her. So if she wasn't a strong actress, everything wouldn't have fit. Mm -hmm. I I think if there was a weaker middle character, the whole movie would have flopped. Mm -hmm. So thank God for the main character being good enough to sustain the whole thing so yeah i think she should be rewarded or looked at to say wow great job you know what i mean right. but uh overall yeah this is six this is not something i'm i don't know if i even would recommend it for teenagers or someone under 20 
I would say, yeah, this is pretty cool. You probably like this. I think, yeah, like because they'll see something right, like, like Daya and Layla, our grandbabies. I think they will like it. Yeah, they probably find it interesting. Mm-hmm. They they may not even like it because it's kind of like eh, I don't see any black people in there. <laughs> black people, a lot of black people ain't in Sacramento. But, okay, but it's okay. Yes, but it's I, a, but it's a good story, right? It's a good story. It's a good um, story. and and again, I'm not saying it's not a good story, but uh, and maybe I'm giving it a really low because I think it's so overrated. Um, you know, you got people having it in the eight, mid eights, and nines. No, it's way lower than that. So I'm dropping it to a six, but. Um, that's all I got for it. <laughs> that's all I have. I don't have anything else. With what you got, babe? I already told. I, I'm through. I'm finished with it. You, you, it's it's enough said, babe. So it's enough said. Urban Lifestyle Cafe. Yeah, we do our movie reviews every Wednesday. Every Wednesday. So one of the things that we we try to think about doing too is separating our movies from our tv shows because we see a lot of them because there's so much better tv shows that's coming out that it pushing away a lot of the movies that we see and then you got network movies well not network but um streaming services yeah that has their own movies as well yeah so it's almost like I don't have to go to the movies because you got people like Netflix, and Amazon, and Hulu, and HBO. All of these people coming out with their own movies. So if nothing's good at the theater, you can stream some decent movies that's out there that's kind of better that, than in the theater. So it's just kind of really interesting. So look at that. We're not going to change the name. We just probably put it on a different day. Um, there's no sense on trying to keep changing names and creating new shit, but uh, definitely TV shows are really stepping up, and you'll be looking forward to seeing or hearing our best TV shows of the year, and disappointing, and best movies, and disappointing of the year too, so we'll be pushing that out pretty pretty soon and depends on which one you hear first (laughs) this one may be way way down the line because i really think this one wasn't really worth seeing nice you know see it on hbo's when you get on netflix or something but not a theatrical uh movie to go see what do you think what's that this movie Lady Bird not really go to the movies to see you keep telling you you know how I feel about this you know yeah. I mean I this this is like you said yes maybe an HBO movie yes maybe even a streaming movie but not not theatrical yeah yeah come I know, I know I'm trying to push it to give it a little credit but I just can't I'm sorry <laughs> I'm not going to say no more. He keeps trying to get me to say more about it. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I can't can't say no more. I got you. I got you. All right. (laughs) Urban Lifestyle Cafe. I'm Michael Yabuji, the Black Brother. And thank you for stopping by. And see you next Wednesday. Bye. Bye.